it's a uh, bit of a special recording of Glass of OJ. Hey, it's Odd Job. I'm here with a Glass of OJ for you. Hey, it's OJ, and I have another Glass of OJ. Uh, hey, hey, uh, you are now drinking a Glass of OJ. Hey, welcome to a Glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Ah, it's some good OJ. Hey, everyone. It's OJ, and here's your Glass of OJ today. Hello and welcome back to a glass of OJ. I am Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ, and I'm Odd Job. So- hey, I'm Odd Job, and here's a glass of OJ. Let's get to it. Hey, I'm Odd Job. It's time for a glass of OJ. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. This is Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job, and this is. Hey there, I'm Max Mental CISO. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. I'm DNS Princess. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. And I'm Robert Wagner or Mr. Minion. Hey, it's time for a glass of OJ. I'm Odd Job. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. But a glass of OJ keeps the adversary at bay. Here's a job. Hey, it's time for the 200 subscriber glass of OJ. And I'm a job. So I have now been doing this channel for five years. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, August roundabout uh, 2018 is when I started this channel. And, uh, you know, five years and 208 subscribers later, here we are. Uh, and it doesn't sound like a lot, like, oh, 208 subscribers. I find it to be a pretty big milestone. Um, you know, 20 subscribers per year <laughs> for, you know, a channel that doesn't make any money. Channel that, you know, isn't there to, uh, you know, put Patreons or anything like that out there. This isn't part of my income. Uh, and a channel that, you know, I've kind of been off and on with, uh, you know, there's been a lot of other things that have occupied my time and, uh, you know, I've, I've only sometimes created content. So I've gone months before where you haven't seen a video from me. Um, this year I've missed maybe a couple times. I didn't get a month, uh, where I had a video in. Um, but, uh, for the most part, I think I've had almost a video per month now. Uh, you know, as far as on average, uh, which is really good. Um, but hey, 200 subscribers hit that back around in August. And it's a to me, it's a major milestone. Uh, it is the uh, graphite award, as you can see uh, over here, uh, to have uh, 200 subscribers. So I want to thank each and every one of you for your subscription. Uh, and especially you 208th person there. Uh, and hope you'll continue to, uh, watch this channel and share it with your friends, uh, and also contribute and give me feedback on what you would like to see better. Um, but I want to, I want to celebrate by telling you a little bit about the history of this channel and what it was meant to be, uh, give you a little rundown of the top 10 videos, the bottom 10 videos. Uh, no, there are no verse 10 videos. Uh, that's a little gay joke for those who don't know. Uh, and then tell you a little bit about where the channel's going. Uh, and hopefully you'll be excited about that. So let's just start with talking about a little bit of the history of the cha- uh, the channel. So I kind of started this a uh, little bit after DEF CON uh, in 2018. And um, I started recording uh, f- what was called Fail Along With Me. That was the original channel name, Fail Along With Me. And the whole idea of Fail Along With Me was... Much like saying, ah, follow me, follow along with me. 
uh, while I do this thing. It's kind of like a PBS uh, tutorial, like Bob Ross, follow and paint along with Bob Ross. Well, this is fail along with OJ uh, as he attempts to build or configure or do something with technology and fail at every turn um, and learn how not to do it while we learn how to do it. Because at the end of the day, that's really what learning is about many times. It's about failure. Uh, and I wanted to highlight to people that this is purely, this is acceptable and purely uh, many times what infosec what technology is about is about failing and learning to get past something you know a lot of times we think uh you know everything is just come in hit a few buttons uh and save the day uh and that's just not how it works it's cry yourself to sleep as to why this isn't working the way it should work and then be like aha eureka i found the problem uh and then you fix it and then everything you know everything works but you had so many failures uh to get to that point uh lessons learned right are so important uh you know if you look at anybody who's been in the industry for 10 15 20 25 years uh you know they'll say they've learned far more from their mistakes and their failures than they ever did from things they did right the first time so that was what fail along with me was about. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it failed. <laughs> uh, but I didn't let that stop because I actually, through other things I was trying to do with the channel, found some successes. Uh, so in fail along with me spirit, we kind of moved on from fail along with me. Um, one of the first things that was amazing, though, was uh, having... Um, uh, one of my first uh, fail along with me sessions was going through Maori Unicorn's reverse engineer 101 course that she put together that she taught at DEF CON um, back in 2018. Uh, it was really a big surprise when, you know, I'm in there showing folks how to run through this this course and how they can learn reverse engineering and just walking through her course because it was so good. I wanted to just walk through and show people, hey, go run it and you can learn and here's all the different things you can do. Here's how this... Here this, here's how these types of attacks look like in organizations. You know, here's how an incident responder would see this. Throwing these little nuggets in there. But... There were parts of her uh, class for some reason that weren't working right. And then all of a sudden I noticed a chat popping up uh, saying, oh, yeah, the documentation's wrong. Uh, it actually needs to be this. I've changed it. It's like, what do you mean you've changed it? Oh, crap. That's Malware Unicorn. I found out that, that it was right there. It's her name. Malware Unicorn was there. So Malware Unicorn actually was on one of the one of the first, uh, you know, uh, um, not a collab because you didn't come on camera with me, but essentially collaborated with me in chat, uh, you know, to to get some of the coursework to work, and uh, she helped a lot in that, and she was. She was excited because, you know, it's like, oh, cool, I'm getting to see if my courseware is working, uh, you know, and it's basically like seeing feedback for that. Um, but it was really cool because I look up to her a lot. Um, you know, she's doing all the cool stuff I, you know, quite honestly wish I was doing. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm also very happy to be doing what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, that's she's doing the stuff that I think is really cool and the stuff I've always wanted to do in InfoSec uh, and hacking right, is breaking it down uh, and finding out how malware works. Um, but then I started doing segments after kind of the cuckoo saga, <laughs> about nine to 18 hours of me trying and failing to set up a cuckoo sandbox that uh, even paid people from Accenture couldn't even figure out how to put together. Um, the you know, they, uh, you know, I, I ended up just giving up and, but then I said, well, what if I could use my YouTube channel and have a segment on fail along with me and keep it alive by having a segment called glass of zero J glass of OJ. It's my name. Right. Um, and so I got, I got, you know, everything kind of situated for more of a podcast setup and I started out and my first, uh, my first video, I believe, uh, was, uh, facial recognition and passwords. And, you know, it, it did okay. The next video after that was uh, about a DHCP vulnerability, and that actually got a lot of views comparatively, um, like five times as many views, and made me think, oh, maybe I'm onto something. Maybe I need to be doing these this type of work. Maybe people don't want to see tech tutorials or someone failing all the time. 
And then Steve D3 just gave me the idea at some point, uh, you know, not too far into 2019. Uh, OJ, just change your channel name to Glass of OJ. Stop calling it Fail Along With Me. You need to rebrand. Uh, and therefore, this channel has ever since been called uh, Glass of Zero J. <laughs> And from there, the channel really started taking off because it really was, uh, you know, a brand uh, and something I think people could understand and get around. Now, that doesn't mean that immediately it took off and I had like, you know, hundreds of subscribers, clearly, because I've only now just got 200. Um, but, you know, it didn't mean I was getting hundreds of views on my on my videos. And in fact, a lot of my least uh, watched videos are from that er that first couple years of era of recording. Which you can imagine because that was my least subscribed time and very little people go back to watch those videos. Um, but let's talk about the top 10 videos. I'm going to try to run through these videos real quick. I might throw some things on the screen here, uh, you know, as, as I go through to either show a clip or, uh, you know, um, uh, an audio list clip or, you know, some kind of some kind of segment from there. Uh, but I hope you enjoy this as we kind of go through the top 10 and top uh, and bottom 10 videos uh, this channel has seen. And, uh, you know, starting with number 10, stop fish testing. And it's interesting because there's another fishing one in the bottom 10. And we'll talk about why I think there's uh, in there. But, you know, stop fish testing uh, was an interesting video uh, because I changed my mind, actually, about fish testing. And uh, shortly after talking with uh, 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 El Ellie Punk, El Punk, um, and she basically told me, uh, yeah, you need to uh, stop uh, doing, uh, fish testing and, uh, you recommending people fish test, uh, is, is, is not good. Um, and I was like, what, what do you mean? But fish testing does do something. You just need to do something a little different. Um, basically schooled me and I was, you know, through, through some of, uh, the arguments presented, I said, yeah, actually, no, you're right. <laughs> we shouldn't be fish testing. And I did a video then on that about how you should stop fish testing. Um, it's always important to recognize that you can be wrong. Um, the ex Uber CISO being convicted, right? And this was so interesting because uh, there are so many people who are afraid as security experts that they're going to throw us in prison uh, for being security experts, for, you know, uh, compromising a system during a pen test or, you know, all these things. And while that may be possible uh, and sometimes has come close to happening, um, a CISO going to prison because they essentially covered up a ransomware breach uh, during the middle of a federal investigation of their company. Um, yeah, you're probably going to go to prison for that, and you should go to prison for that. Um, so, if you're if you're whining and crying that the uh, ex Uber CISO went to prison uh, for uh, you know his his misdeeds, uh, you're probably not the kind of person uh, you know organizations want to have you uh, as a CISO. Or maybe there are some organizations that do want you as CISO. Um, you know, maybe you deserve each other. Uh, want seniors hire juniors? Uh, I'm very happy to see this one was uh, was a was accepted. It's one of my more opinionated ones. Uh, simply just talking about um, you know the fact that everyone's bemoaning and crying. Oh, we can't find the cyber talent we want. We can't find the skilled workers we want. And really, it's they want all these senior skills. They want people to have like 10, 15 years of you know, experience. Meanwhile, there's no entry level jobs. There's no training. There's no anything that's actually going to get anybody to be a senior one day. Uh, and it's like, Hey, if you want seniors, you've got to put in the work. You need to hire juniors. You need to train them to be intermediates. You need to train them to be seniors. Uh, and it may mean they leave your company at some point, but if enough of us are doing that out there, then we'll have seniors to be able to trade back and forth and we'll have more juniors to bring in as well. Um, I started doing event recaps. So there was the uh, Blue Team Con 2022, and it was actually, uh, I think, was it my first collab? It may have been my first collab, actually. I did a collaboration with uh, Accidental CISO, and uh, sat next to me, and we talked about our time at Blue Team Con in 2022, and that was really fun. Uh, and, uh, ShmooCon 2022 also, uh, I did, uh, as well as I talked a little bit about, uh, a story from Hackers for Charity, uh, at ShmooCon. Uh, and that was my fifth most watched video or rather my sixth most watched video. 
Uh, number five was National Coming Out Day 2023, where I basically uh, came out more publicly, uh, but just kind of let everyone know, hey, um, more on the channel, uh, I'm gay and I'm an atheist. Uh, and here's why it's important for people to come out. Here's why it's important to give space to people to come out. Here's why it's important to come out in a public way so that other people feel like coming out. And the fact that we need to be able to bring our whole selves to work. We need to be able to bring our whole selves to conferences, the community, YouTube channels, and other places. Um, and it really makes me feel good. It's, you know, my, my fifth most watched video. Um, but the fact it's on my top 10 makes me feel really good. It means people really, really want to see this type of content and they supported it. Um, and I felt good about it. So thank you for your support in that video. War Driving with DNS Princess, another collab video with a dear friend of mine, DNS Princess. And they sat with me uh, right right over here and talked about, uh, you know, uh, war driving and what that is and the worldwide war drive and how you could sign up. Uh, did anybody do that, by the way? Comment down in the comments and tell me uh, if you found any foxes. Did you uh, scan any Wi-Fis out there in your neighborhood or in your quad? Uh, tell me some stories. That had to be pretty fun. Um, but you know, and I went out war driving after that. It was, it was a, it was a fun time. Uh, but yeah, seeing, seeing my dear friend with me, uh, you know, in, in the top five there, uh, is, is really again, tickled, uh, to have that. And it's, it's one that's within, you know, the past few months, uh, that, that, that video was created. So, um, you know, also again, to see that this is how my channel has grown as well. Uh, the last pass breach. Now, this is a bit of an old one, um, uh, or maybe actually not too much. This one's actually more from last year, I think. Uh, it's the next one. It's the older one. Uh, it's funny. It's one of my oldest videos, but also uh, one of the most popular. Um, but, uh, you know, the last pass breach, uh, it's kind of a breach that keeps on giving because we keep talking about, um, you know, how, you know, more and more people's uh, credentials were, you know, discovered from the last pass breach and were then used to breach other accounts and other systems. So, um, yeah, it was a, it was a major failure. And, you know, I had already moved off of LastPass onto uh, Bitwarden. Uh, and by the way, you should move off LastPass as well. I, it's one of the very few security services or or softwares or companies out there that I recommend everyone run very far away from. Uh, simply because of the way over the last seven or so years, the way they've treated security, the way they've treated, uh, you know, these mishaps, um, they don't really seem to be learning the lessons uh, the way they should. And, uh, you know, until someone else also uh, makes uh, major missteps uh, in, in, in gross uh, patterns, uh, then, you know, we'll, I'll probably stick with where I'm at. Uh, this is the one that's a bit of an older video. Uh, SolarWinds supply chain compromised. So this was, this was a pretty old episode. Um, and in fact, I believe the SolarWinds issue was back in December 14, 2020. So this is the third year of me doing uh, the channel. Um, and this got 216 views. Um, the, the, the most views I had ever had up until then. Twice as many views as my other most viewed video. I mean, it was, it was, it was amazing to see that number. Um, because it was such an important event out there. But not every important event, as you're about to see, uh, ended up getting a lot of views. Um, but yeah, it, and, it's, and it's a bit of an older one. Uh, and then the one that got the most views, uh, Had Nagy versus DEF CON. Um, you know, you know just, just going through, and I, I really appreciated this video a lot because it was a very factual breakdown. And I tried not to express too many opinions uh, in favor of Chris or in favor of Jeff Moss and DEF CON, um, but more so just kind of analyzing, you know, what could happen next, what looks like could be the next steps. Um, and there's been some more developments, actually, because he's back and he's suing Jeff Moss and DEF CON in Las Vegas. Uh, probably another bad venue to sue because it was dismissed for lack of ven good venue, uh, lack of proper venue in Pennsylvania. It's probably going to get dismissed, or at least it probably should get dismissed for the same reasons in Vegas, because DEF CON didn't ban, you know, Chris Hadnagy from DEF CON in Las Vegas. They did that from their headquarters, Washington. 
So that was, you know, it's not like they had him at the conference and banned him there. You know, it, it's they banned him from afar. <laughs> um, so if anything, the true venue for this should probably be Washington. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, and I need to keep uh, on top of that one and maybe create another video to kind of break down what's been happening. What's are the new arguments? The arguments are mostly the same, but there's a little bit of different coloring and trying to preempt some of the arguments they they found when DEF CON uh, was in Pennsylvania defending themselves. So they're thinking forward a little bit, but it'll be interesting to see if those arguments uh, end up helping bolster their case or not. So those were the top, but what were the bottom? And we're going to talk about a little bit about lessons learned from what the bottom 10 videos are. What do the top 10 and bottom 10 tell me? Bottom 10 videos, you're going to see more rants and raves, but you'll also see some interesting, um, you're going to also see some interesting, um, uh, you know, news events that you, you, I kind of scratch my head even to this day and say, how is this not more popular? How did this not get more views? Um, but, you know, again, maybe it was, uh, maybe, maybe it was just the algorithm. Uh, but th the first one, um, is the three pillars of controls. So this is the 10th most, the 10th least viewed, uh, video. Uh, and it was, it, it's kind of a silly thing. I think it was, uh, me just carrying on some thought leadership for the sake of it. Um, and I, I'm not even really going to go into detail as to what that video was really about, but it was essentially making the case that unless you're able to do these three things with your controls, I think it was manage, govern, and, and, uh, and, and support them, uh, or maybe, no, no, it was operationalize, manage, and support. If you can't do those three things, uh, then you don't have a control. I think it's still a good take overall. It's just, it didn't need a whole video. <laughs> it needed a short. Maybe that's what I should do with those types of rants and raves is just do a quick short about it. Um, generalism, which again, this was just more of an opinion. Me just being more of a thought leader about, you know, my experience at InfoSec. I'm a generalist more so. Um, and it's very interesting to, uh, to see that this is the ninth least viewed video. Uh, you know, and I took a lot of inspiration from Adam Savage with it and made a lot of parallels to talking about a video that Adam Savage had made that inspired me to make that video about, hey, hey, being a generalist is a good thing. Uh, you have a lot of arrows in your quiver, uh, as, as he says, uh, to whip out at any time and, you know, solve very interesting issues with, oh, yeah, I know this one skill uh, that can help here. Uh, but you're not going to be able to just dig in on that one skill and do all kinds of amazing miracle work with it. Um, but anyway, uh, making good assumptions. Again, some more thought leadery, more opinions, more ranting, just about making good assumptions. And how do you make good assumptions uh, at work? This is the one that's interesting. There's a top 10 video about stopping fish testing. Well, this video, it's the uh, seventh most watched or seventh least watched video. Um, it's fishing above your maturity, basically saying, eh, let's go beyond just your normal kind of boring fish testing and let's start making it more interesting. Um, I've changed my mind since then, uh, but it is one of the lesser watched videos, maybe because it wasn't the spicy take, you know, and stop fish testing. That's a fairly spicy take. It's a good headline. You got to admit it's going to get clicks. Uh, facial recognition and passwords, where I talk about how facial recognition uh, is essentially a password. <laughs> uh, and it's a password you can never change, <laughs> or at least you don't change very much. Uh, you know, uh, uh, year to year, you can't really change it. You kind of have to wait a long time until your face changes or you go through a major change in life on, uh, with either consensually or not. So... That was, uh, that was, you know, again, a lesser, a lesser viewed video. Opposing charlatanry, which again is something I've done in the last year and was really done uh, to highlight uh, why uh, you need to oppose folks like Jonathan Data Scott, why it's important to speak out when people are uh, speaking utter nonsense drivel and trying to convince people to make policy decisions based on poor uh, research and poor work that really, uh, you know, by, by all the experts, uh, is bunk, <laughs> uh, you know, and, but yet is still being, you know, lifted up as someone who could be an expert by those in power. 
imposing opposing charlatanry is very important. And, you know, J Jonathan A. Scott's only continued to make himself more infamous with his um, uh, racism as well as misogyny, uh, transphobia, and just, you know, continuing on and on and on and on. Uh, the things he says uh, in his social media um, has just been absolutely dreadful. Uh, not, not to mention just his, uh, his uh, I won't say lack of expertise, because I don't really know what expertise he has. It's hard to tell with a charlatan how much they really do know versus how much, you know, um, grift they're just pushing. <laughs> Colonial Pipeline, that was a major one. That was interesting to see how little views I got on that one. Uh, that video only got 18 views uh, in is the fourth least watched video. Um, you know, that involved operational technology. It involved critical infrastructure. Uh, it stopped oil. Uh, it actually modified and changed the price of oil for a bit in the United States. Uh, raised gas prices in some places. Some people were going a little crazy with it. Um, it was a pretty big deal. And it was interesting to talk about how that, how it wasn't even an attack on OT. It was an attack on the billing system. Um, there was a lot of interesting lessons learned. What should you do? But Unlike the solar wind supply chain compromise, that one didn't really get a lot of views, and uh, not sure, not really sure why. It was in 2021 when I was kind of a little bit better at creating videos and also uh, marketing them. So, the uh, update on the Missouri governor, uh, you know, the Missouri governor who uh, essentially tried to uh, get somebody put in prison because they hit F12 on their keyboard, right? Uh, you know, it said they were hacking our website. Um, uh, and yeah, it, that was, that was fun, but seeing kind of the update on the Missouri governor, um, and just that whole saga, uh, again, you know, one of the least watched videos, uh, just because it's a current event doesn't mean it's going to gather a lot of traffic, uh, politics and values and infosec. This was basically a video, uh, where I basically just said, Hey, if you have horrendous views, uh, and I don't just mean like what method you want to use to tax people. I mean, oh, these people do not deserve human rights because of the color of their skin or because they have different body parts or identify different ways with their body parts. Um, yeah, you're a horrendous person and I have want nothing to do with you in the information security community and I don't want to work with you. Uh, never, never reveal your opinions. Uh, I really, I, no, I will not work with people like that. Uh, you do not let me uh, be welcome. Uh, so I will not let you be welcome uh, in, in, in the places where I, I wish to exist. Um, that's just quite simply how that works. <laughs> uh, you know, human rights at the end of the day are not politics. Um, how you want to tax someone, how you want to fund, you know, the government or how you want to do that. Fine. That's politics. And you can go talk about that. But if you're wanting to talk about human rights, yeah, sorry, that's not a discussion that's up for debate in this community. Uh, you can see your way out because you don't belong here. Um, rocket science and ditch digging. This was <laughs> silly, silly, silly titling. I thought I was being cute back then, but, um, no, it wasn't. It was a lot, a lot like my three pillars of controls. Uh, just not really good title. But it was basically saying, hey, a lot of people think information security, IT, it's all rocket science. There's a lot of crazy doodads and things you got to do to be good at InfoSec. Nah, it's usually a lot of ditch digging. There's a lot of grunt work and there's a lot of non-glorious work that happens in IT and InfoSec that actually gets the job done. There's certainly a lot of complexity. There's a lot of crazy things going on. But usually we're simplifying things in order to make them um, uh, better in InfoSec. Um, and, you know, I also did a poll on LinkedIn and InfoSec Exchange and Mastodon uh, to kind of see what what types of content do you most like to see in your security podcasts and videos? Uh, not just mine, but any of them to kind of just see, you know, hey, where am I matching up with that and where might I want to go with it? I, I gave I gave some ideas um, and, you know, I didn't allow another. It was just kind of like, hey, here's some ideas. They're ideas I kind of like. And I wanted to see what people liked in them. And it was about current events, security concept explanations, tech tutorials, interviews, collabs, rants, and opinions. Uh, and it was very interesting to see the results where the top responses were security concept explanations, interviews, collabs, and current events breakdowns. 
Now that's when I combined the LinkedIn and Mastodon. If you just pay attention to Mastodon, uh, it was purely uh, about security concept explanation and current events breakdown with just a little bit of people wanting interviews and collabs. Um, the rest of it was, uh, you know, again, just people wanting the, the top two there. LinkedIn really wanted to see uh, the interviews and collaborations, uh, and that really skewed the total results in that way. So that was interesting for me to see. Um, but it also told me uh, that, hey, I have some interviews and collabs I've been doing, so that's been good to see. And I also have, uh, you know, been doing a lot of current events breakdowns. What I haven't done so much of, at least with not a lot of rants and uh, opinions, is security concept explanations. Actually explain a security concept, you know. What is passwordless? You know, what, what does that involve? Um, you know, what uh, is zero trust? Uh, what is secure software development lifecycle? You know, what are these concepts? Um, and so that's probably where the future of my channel is going to be. I'm still going to do these event style things. I'm going to try to do more interviews and collabs, but I am going to focus probably more on uh, security concept explanations going forward and try to bring some of those uh, materials out to the forefront. Um, so the future of the channel, um, it's still going to be free. This channel is not going to be monetized. I'm not looking to make money off this channel. I make plenty of money in my day job. <laughs> so <laughs> cheers to that. But this, this channel is going to continue to be free because, you know, I wanted to basically build an impact in this community. I wanted to have an outlet for my ideas. I wanted to have a way to inter interact with people. I wanted to have a way to uh, network with people via this channel. And that's mostly worked for the most part. But what I also want to do now is turn my attention to uh, helping people understand concepts, because even in, as information security professionals, um, you know, we understand our niche maybe more, or we under we maybe have a collection of security concepts we're really knowledgeable about, and we have a lot of other concepts that we've got some understanding and inkling of really what's going on, but we really don't know how to break it down all that well. So that's what those videos are going to be about. Sometimes it will be also about me researching a particular topic more in depth and then presenting the distillation of that information. Some of it is going to be me interviewing, collabing with people who know that information really well. They're subject matter experts. And they're going to be presenting and essentially working with me to break down what those security concepts are and how those apply uh, in the job uh, and in the workplace. Uh, I'm going to try to keep the rants and opinions down. Uh, but, you know, if I just feel like making a video uh, on a social issue, community happening, or something else where I have an opinion and I just want to talk about what I think, uh, I'm going to make a video about that. <laughs> After all, this video, this channel uh, is only successful because I make videos I want to make. <laughs> At the end of the day, the best videos you can make in any content creator uh, environment are the videos you want to make. Uh, if you're making videos you don't want to make, then you better be monetizing. <laughs> and again, I don't want to do that. Uh, but ultimately, I could not get this far without you. Because let me tell you what, if it was five years and I only had 50 subscribers to show for it, even for the amount of work that I have done, I'd probably pack it in. I'd probably say, you know what? I'm going to spend my time doing something different. I'm going to do something else. YouTube was not this or this format or something wasn't right. I'm going to do something different. Um, but five years, 7,512 views, 365.3 hours, and 208 subscribers over that period of time. That's an accomplishment to me. That feels good. Um, and I'm very happy uh, to have every single one of you uh, watching videos as you see them. You know, I've started doing TikTok now. I've started, uh, you know, breaking up my videos into YouTube shorts. Uh, and I've seen a lot of views on those. There, there have been TikToks that have received far more views than any of my videos, uh, my full length videos on YouTube. Um, and it's great because you get to see a little nugget <laughs> of information. People are still getting the content. 
Um, but you know, it's amazing to kind of see, you know, the different types of short form video that exists out there by chunking things up from the longer form. Uh, I may play around with some more short form series of videos, uh, where I take, you know, with the time constraint, you have to be a lot a lot more concise. You have to be more careful with what you say and get it pithy and be effective with it. Um, and so I may start doing some more short term exclusive videos where they don't get put into a long form video. You just have to catch them on YouTube shorts and TikToks. Um, I may try to do that. But for now, I'm probably going to still use YouTube shorts and TikToks to just promote the long form videos I have with those little one minute nuggets you get to see. Um, I make the content, but you're at the end of the day, the people who watch it. Uh, and at the end of the day, you'll determine whether this channel is successful or not. Um, and, you know, back, uh, you know, 13 years ago, we didn't have, uh, we had podcasts, uh, you know, like defensive security podcast. Uh, we had podcasts and we had other things like that. There was Security Weekly, but it was more of a commercial endeavor, or at least it turned into a commercial endeavor. Um, you know, everybody else was either a vendor, uh, a media company, uh, some just a podcast, uh, or talks at conferences where you've got to sit for 45 to 50 minutes. Some of my videos have been pretty long, but I try to not make them that long unless it's like an interview or a collaboration, a longer, really long form video, a feature event. Um, and I don't think you should have to go and sit through a conference talk just to get the information you want. And so uh, trying to be more effective with this medium about how I can get that information out there. Um, but that was harder to do back 13 years ago. It was really hard to put together a video. Um, you know, nowadays what I do back, back in the day, I just had a webcam and I just, uh, you know, I just looked at the camera started. If I sneezed, I stopped re-recorded. Uh, if the cat came in and did something, you know, I re-recorded and I still do that, but I've got things controlled a lot more. Now I script things and I can go just a single shot and get things done. Even if it's 30 minutes long now. Uh, and a lot of that's thanks to channels like Leto's Law that has really inspired me to do those single shots. You're not seeing a lot of jump cuts here. Um, only if I was sneezing or doing something else. Nowadays with DaVinci Resolve, I just kind of, you know, merge those two clips together and cut out the sneeze. But I, my goal is really not to go and do too many, um, you know, cuts to the, to the material. I just want to make this easy for me to get out there with you. Uh, and for the most part, it works like that, but really we didn't have a lot of good options back then. Cameras weren't as good to be able to plug in. Uh, they were still a lot more expensive, um, 13 years ago, even, um, you know, I don't, really know how well, I guess OBS kind of maybe existed maybe a couple of years later. We're on OBS 29 now, cause I'm looking at it right here. I'm running OBS, uh, you know, right now to record this. Um, you know, we, we really didn't have good methods, uh, of content creation back then. Uh, and you used to just see video tutorials about, you know, how to use a tool like Wireshark or other things like that. Faceless. A lot of people didn't want to put their face on, uh, you know, the screen. Uh, Wolf Gorlick was one of the first people I saw, uh, doing stuck in traffic, a couple minutes riff on it and it security. <laughs> he was the first person doing that. And he just did that from his cell phone. You know, he'd get stuck in traffic. He'd be thinking about something on the way to work. He'd stick his can click his camera on and go hi. And then once camera, you know, it's about the time he was done is about when traffic would get back going. Um, I love that. I love that whole, uh, you know, the series he did, um, inspired me in a lot of ways to get into doing content creation on YouTube. Um, but, uh, you know, 13 years ago, you didn't see videos like this. So my impact has wanted to be to, to, to be able to provide content, be, a, be able to provide a channel that you didn't have when I was growing up in technology and infosec, um, to try and, to try and grow and make it better for the next generation. And even for the people who currently, uh, you know, like to consume media. I also need you to help me with growing this channel. Um, 
you know, uh, you, I need you to help me share uh, videos if you see them on Mastodon or, uh, you know, if you see them on LinkedIn, you know, share them, uh, like them, uh, comment on them, uh, helps the algorithm. Uh, and also just share. Do you have discords that they say, hey, put your cool YouTube videos here? Put my video in there if you really liked a video I did. Uh, share it in your telegrams. Share it in your signal chats if you share videos that you really like back and forth with each other. Um, but if you if you if you think your CISO or your board would like to to see a video, um, you know, give it to them. I do try and make it to where you know my video can't my videos can be consumed by different people, and especially if it's like a current event breakdown. What should you really do in response to this? Try to make it something that, you know, everybody can watch and get the idea and understand what they should be doing and what their concerns should be after that. So do your part and help share and grow this channel. Um, at some point, I want to create a Discord, you know, a, a place for the community to kind of exist, grow, thrive, interact with itself and each other, uh, interact with me, collaborate with me. Um, but, you know, it's not that time yet. 200 is not quite enough subscribers, I don't think, to create that channel and create that community as of yet. Um, it's kind of more of a click at that point, and I don't want that. Um, maybe the maybe a thousand subscribers is the right time to start thinking about a Discord channel. Uh, so help me get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, I'll do my part. I'm going to try to build more videos that I think you're liking, clearly from the polling, clearly from the history of views. I'm now starting to see what everyone likes and what's going to help grow the channel. Uh, but also do your part by letting me know what you want to see. Uh, is there a topic you want broken down? Uh, is there a relatively new security concept that, you know, it's like, Hey, you need to make, you can't make heads or tails of it. You know, someone told me, you know, I see people talking about this XDR stuff. There's EDR, there's MDR, there's NDR. What are all these DRs? Can you, you know, who can explain it to me? And I'm going to be breaking those down in a video here soon. Uh, you know, what are these different things? And, you know, what do they really, you know, what are, what are, what do each of those do for you? And uh, would you use one over the other? Does it replace a SIM? Does it replace AV? Does it, what does it replace? Does it replace my IPS? Is it my IPS? Is it just all SIM at the end and SOAR? That's an example of something I want to help break down for people so that they understand the concepts and what's going on in the industry. Uh, so if you've got a topic, if you've got a question, if you've got something you'd like to see me cover, if you see a cybersecurity news event out there, maybe someone's going to jail, maybe there's a breach out there, uh, maybe a company has made a really dumb statement with regards to security, maybe there's you know uh, some policies that are being created out there that we should be cautious of. Maybe there's a lawsuit uh, regarding security that you think we should be paying attention to. Give it to me. Find me on social media. Find me on uh, Mastodon, uh, InfoSec Exchange. I'm 0DDJ0BB. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Uh, and you can also just email this channel. It's failalongwithme at gmail.com. Yeah, I still haven't changed the, uh, the Google account name. I need to do that. <laughs> uh, and I will one day <laughs> uh, once I get it kind of figured how to, uh, how to uh, uh, properly take this channel over uh, with the new account. But um, yeah, help me out. Give me some ideas and uh, let me know what you want to see. And uh, catch me down in the comments, catch me on social media, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.